An entitled mother thinks that she can arrest me at GameStop. Here's what happened. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell to turn on notifications. For those of you that don't know, GameStop is a video game store. I went to GameStop on Saturday to pick up chat with a friend and browse the merchandise. I also wanted to get an Xbox X and a PS4 along with some games. Roughly spend more money there than I ever have before. I was there for about an hour or two having conversations with three people, one employee, my friend, and the manager. After a while, I was talking with the employee about the specifications between the consoles and the differences between the versions of the PS4. Then the manager stepped out for lunch. After a short time, the entitled mother and the entitled kid walked in and rushed to the Switch section. While I was sifting through the games, the employee went to ask them if they needed help finding anything. She asked some questions, but I tuned them out while me and my friend talked about certain games. About 20 minutes later, I knew what I was getting. The employee was getting everything together. A PS4 Pro, two controllers, a PSVR, and five games. An Xbox One, an Elite controller, an Astro headset, and four games for the Xbox. My friend was talking about a game that he wanted and I said I'd get it for him as a favor for helping me out a few months ago. He thanked me and that was it. Almost. The entitled mom and the entitled kids saw what was going on and when they heard me they came right over and the entitled mom asked her if I would help her and her child buy a game. I said no thank you. She was looking at me like I was crazy and said you're buying him what he wants. Why won't you buy my kids something? I told her that he's my friend and I'm giving him back something after he helped me out. She looked at everything on the counter and said, How old are you? You're too old to be playing all these games. You don't need them. You should just give them to my kids. I said, My age is irrelevant. People of any age can play video games and your children are too young to play the games that I'm buying. They are rated M for mature and I'm not going to buy your children things that they don't need. She then tells her kids to beg for the video games and I quickly turn to her and tell her you are not a responsible adult and parent by teaching your kids to beg for free stuff. She continues telling her kids something as I'm talking to my friend. Suddenly I'm grabbed by two children pulling on me and jumping and begging me to get them something. I gently take their arms off of me, keep them away and the kids began crying. The mother said, you just touched my child you pervert. I'm calling the police. A minute before she calls the police, the manager comes back and sees me grabbing the kids and pushing them away and tells me to let go of those kids. I told him the whole story, but he wasn't believing it. He only saw a fragment of the confrontation. The manager talks to the woman and she completely lies about what happened. She said that I tried to bribe her to touch her kids while nobody was looking and to even attempt to bribe her with the games that I was buying. I was laughing at the conversation that was being said so much that I said, surely you can't believe this. But he was already on his phone with the cops. The employee was in the back of the building during all of this and I thought I was in deep trouble because I've seen issues like this and some even worse where people automatically go with the woman's side of the story. I may be wrong with some implications, but it's very common for people to believe women over anything. 10 minutes later, the cops arrive. When I try to talk to one of them, she butts in to give her story first. So she tells the same story to the cops and the manager tells the same and the cops look at me and one of them puts me in handcuffs without hearing my side of the story. I am totally freaking out by how this has come down onto me being the bad guy based on a lie. I finally get to tell them my side of the story and even my friend backs me up but I was told her story is more believable than mine. And I said, you'll believe her without proof? They have security cameras in every corner of the building. Look at the footage and see for yourself. The look on her face was life shattering. She tried to say that she wasn't going to press charges but they wanted to keep her here. The manager and one of the officers go look at the surveillance video and soon come out to take the handcuffs off of me and apologize. They ask her why she attempted to lie to them and ruin my life and reputation and she replied with, he's too old to be playing those games. He should give them to me and my kids. They asked me if I wanted to press charges but I said no. I don't want her to get a slap on the wrist for this. They talked to her outside and after identifying her, they found out that she had a warrant for her arrest for something else. I was was just flabbergasted over the whole situation. The manager tried to apologize for how he reacted to the situation and I just told him I wanted a copy of the footage. He asked why and I said, ask the cops because I will be making a complaint on how you presented yourself. A few moments later, I get a copy and go home and I didn't even want 
the video games anymore. A few days later, I found out that that store was temporarily closed down, awaiting new staff members. I may have caused an issue with a retail manager, but he should have handled the situation more professionally. He should have checked the surveillance video in the beginning instead of calling the police first. If he had done that, then this woman wouldn't have gotten arrested and he wouldn't have been fired. I mainly feel bad for the kids involved in this. They are being raised by a crazy woman who thinks begging and lying is the only way to get what you want in life. So now that you know everything, am I the jerk? I feel the same way the original poster feels too at the end of this, just feeling bad for the kids that have to be raised by this lady. She's trying to force them to beg to random people in stores so that they'll buy them stuff and then have them included in her scheme to cast false allegations on just random people that she runs into, all on the assumption that they'll never check the video cameras and get proof. I guess her plan here is that she's hoping the OP would sweat enough that he would just buy her whatever she wanted before any logic was ever involved in the situation where somebody thought, hey, maybe I should see if this is actually true by looking at the cameras. And maybe that's worked for her in the past and that's why she thought it would work here. I get that the manager wasn't there at the exact moment this all went down, but it is kind of weird that he would just automatically assume that the OP is guilty without even questioning it any further because as he says, her story is more believable than his. And maybe it actually is more believable because of how absurd this whole situation is. So if you were in the OP shoes on this one, how would you have handled the situation? Let me know down below and jerk or not a jerk and why. My husband finally admits that I am ugly. My husband is 30 years old and I am a 28 year old female and I am an unattractive woman, objectively. I've always been this way and while I've accustomed myself to it, it nonetheless remains a daily fact that being an ugly woman sucks. I met my husband four years ago and he is the greatest thing that has ever happened to me. He has always and frequently told me I'm beautiful and somehow sounded honest without sounding like my mother, like someone without another option to answer. Last night on Saturday, he had a group of friends over to our home. They meet several times a month to hang out, catch up, and play games. He has known most of these guys since high school. I was upstairs in the kitchen preparing drinks and snacks and I was able to hear them in the basement and began to eavesdrop, which I know was rude, but it wasn't really intentional. I realized they were talking about me. A couple of guys were teasing my husband about me, specifically about my looks. I could tell it was supposed to be funny. It was not. There was a point where one of them referred to me as a troll and my husband blew up and started shouting, listen, shut the heck up. I know that my wife is ugly, but shut up. She makes me happy. Does your bimbo of the week do that, Jim? Dave, how long has it been since we've hung out and you haven't complained about your wife? He went on for a while defending me, but all I could hear was, I know she's ugly, I know she's ugly, I know she's ugly, again and again in my head. It just broke me. I don't know why. I've always known I'm unattractive, but he isn't supposed to too. He tells me I'm beautiful so sincerely and consistently, I'd started to actually believe he thought that. I started to cry and ran into a shower so no one could hear me. When I came out an hour later, everyone had gone home, far earlier than normal. I went to bed and haven't spoken to him all day, but I think I've been able to avoid letting him know I'm upset or avoiding him. I know rationally that what he said was true and sweet and that I should be happy he loves me and not my body, but it doesn't seem to matter. I just want to be pretty. God, I feel so shallow. I've been crying all day. What do I say to him? Part of me wants to call him a liar and scream and yell and cry while the other part just wants to run away and never have to talk to him again and acknowledge that even the greatest man I will ever meet can't find me attractive. So what should I do? Jumping into the future, there is an update. Here's a recap from the last post. I overheard my husband admit to his friends that I am ugly, even though I knew this to be true already and the admitting happened in the midst of him explaining how much he loves me. It makes me feel terrible, worthless, and like I lost something I'd waited my whole life for. I'd given up hope I'd ever have a partner who even liked me before I met him. I lost a lottery spectacularly at birth and my life feels like a big joke, a cycle of humiliation and punishment I did nothing to deserve. I don't even know how to talk to him. So yesterday, after getting a barrage of support from you guys on my phone every couple of minutes nonstop all day, I decided to try and confront my husband over what I'd overheard. After we were both home from work, I told him I needed to talk. I told him I'd overheard him and his friends and he immediately started to apologize for them, saying that they were jerks and that I should have told him I'd heard. I had to stop him to let me get a word in and tell him it wasn't his friends so much as it was what he said. When I told him what he said, his whole tone changed. 
changed. I could tell he wasn't expecting to be blamed. I had had the whole conversation planned out. I wanted to explain how it made me feel, how I thought he was really attracted to me, and how betrayed it made me feel to hear him say that behind my back. But I just started to cry and couldn't really communicate what I had wanted to say very well. He was awesome though and just held me. And then after a minute started to speak like he was reading right out the nicest comments in the original thread, telling me he was just angry and didn't speak very well. That he really does find me attractive even if the world doesn't and even if his friends don't. I calmed down pretty quick. I'd basically cried myself out the day before. He took me to his computer and showed me an email he sent to all of his friends on Sunday. I wish I could copy and paste it now, but he basically called all of his friends jerks, said they'd crossed the line from being good-natured trash talk to just being jerks, and then continued going far beyond. He said that for an indefinite amount of time, they'd have to find another host. They were no longer welcome in my home. He actually said in OP's home. I thought that would make it sound like I was ordering him around being a B, but he said he just wanted to emphasize how wrong what they did was. Seeing him stand up for me again made me happy, especially seeing him do it without talking bad about me, helping me believe it really was just a heat of the moment bad word choice. He told me to wait in the room and left, coming back with the folder. He said he was going to give me this for Christmas, but that he'd get me something else. I tried to say no, but he insisted. It was plane tickets and brochures. He set up a trip in early January to this spa slash hotel slash resort thing in British Columbia. It was pretty mind-blowing, but I realized that it had to be several thousand dollars he'd spent. We budget pretty thoroughly. He shouldn't have been able to spend that without me noticing. I asked where he got the money and he said he'd been planning for this for more than a year and saving all the money assigned to his weekly spending money and collecting where I wouldn't notice. Change from groceries, etc. When I say sometimes I'm not sure I deserve him, understand that I'm not having a crisis I need help dealing with. He's just really awesome. He's taking me out for dinner so I have to go, but I'll be on again tonight. Everything is okay. Husband is an amazing person. I still wish I was prettier, but understand how lucky I am, how happy I should be, and how prettiness and happiness are not synonyms. So, with all that said, where do you think I should go from here? Some people were saying on the side of the husband that maybe he really meant to say, you all may think she's ugly, or even use air quotes, which she wouldn't know about because she couldn't see them, only hear them. But then, of course, there's people on the other side who think that he said what he really felt, but him not thinking that she's pretty doesn't change the fact that he loves her. This reminds me of a situation in The Sopranos where one of the bosses, Johnny Sachs, has a wife that everyone thinks is very ugly. And when everyone else is at a dinner party, a guy named Ralph makes a joke and says, Ginny Sachs, his wife, is getting a 98 pound mole taken off of her butt at this dinner. Someone at that dinner party tells Johnny Sachs and he loses it. It leads to a whole cascade of events. And when he finds out it was Ralph, he wants to end Ralph. And the identity of the person who let it slip was always in question. It changes the whole dynamic of some of the relationships of the most important characters. So something that sounds like it's not that big of a deal to somebody not involved in the situation ends up being a pretty big deal. In The Sopranos, it really severs the relationship he has with people in his life. Just like in this story where it sounds like the OP is about to lose his friends that he's had since high school over this whole situation because he's asking for an indefinite break in their game night. So what advice would you give to the OP in this situation? Let me know down below and what would you do? I am considering leaving my wife because of her weight. Am I the jerk? All right, before I get called a jerk, let me explain. I'm a 32 year old male and my wife is 30. I love my wife. I think she's incredibly beautiful and even more so after she gave birth to our son three years ago. The problem is, is that she put on a good amount of baby weight, obviously, and never lost it and instead started to gain more weight and was overall pretty depressed. I initially assumed it was postpartum depression and suggested that she go to therapy for it. She went to therapy and got some antidepressants. It took her a while to find the right ones and she's been fine mentally since she found them. Physically is a different story, however. She has continued over the past three years to gain weight. The problem isn't anymore that I'm not attracted to her, but she will die if she continues to gain weight. She is currently 5'2 and 260 pounds with a BMI close to 50. I don't know what I can do. I feel like I've tried everything. I've asked her to go to the gym with me, to go on a diet with me, not to buy fast food, have some active hobbies, but she's turned down every single one of these ideas. I feel like I don't have any choice but to give her an ultimatum. Either she genuinely tries to lose the weight or I leave. I can't watch the woman I love and the mother of my child slowly end herself. I don't want to be the dude who gives an ultimatum, but I see no other choice. I guess I just wanted to ask if I'm being the jerk or if 
if there is another way I could go about this. For everyone in the comments telling me that you can be overweight and healthy, you're right, but no, you cannot be obese and healthy, at least not long term. Heart disease runs in my wife's family, and while your weight might not affect you, being overweight is directly linked to heart disease. I understand weight loss isn't easy. I used to be overweight myself, but my concern isn't that she's not the same way she looked when we got together, it's that she may not live to see our son become a teenager. Jumping five months into the future, there is an update. So I made a post about five months ago because I was getting past the point of no return with my wife's weight. Now, expectedly, I got called a jerk and a D-head and every name in the book for even mentioning it. But I also got some good feedback and decided before I made any real decision, I would sit her down and let her know how I was truly feeling. Because at that point, we had multiple conversations addressing it, but none of them led anywhere. So after we put my son to sleep, I asked my wife if we could talk for a moment in the kitchen. Now, I'm not going to lie, the conversation was probably the hardest one I've ever had because despite what everyone believed, I do love my wife. Now, I don't want to get into every detail, but the basis of the conversation was that I needed her to at least try and be healthier. I also think she needed to hear how serious I was about this and when I told her I was even thinking about separating, I think it really put the nail in the coffin. It's been about five months since then and I'm proud to say that my wife has lost 35 pounds. I am so proud of her it's ridiculous. The first month was a hurdle and a half, but now she's going steady and losing weight at a healthy, moderate rate. Recently, she even started to exercise with me. In the morning, I usually jog, but since her knees are somewhat shot three days a week, we go walk a mile or two together and either talk or just listen to music together. I know it sounds corny to say, but she even seems happier and her confidence is coming back as well. Well, this was my little update and I wanted to finish it thanking anyone who gave me advice on the first post, but would I have been the jerk for leaving my wife if she didn't lose weight? It seemed like the OP even mentioning the possibility of a separation is what really kicked her into high gear, but it seemed like he was really trying to help her. The fact that he's doing all this stuff with her is probably what's going to end up making the difference. The fact that he goes on the walks with her when they talk or listen to music and that he wanted to make sure she was okay after the postpartum depression by going to therapy. I think doing the activity together is a lot easier than just telling her, hey, go get healthy, go lose weight, figure it out, I'll see you when you're better. But it seems like it's working out and maybe part of what made the difference too was explaining the whole idea that he didn't think that she would survive long enough to see their son become a teenager. So let me know how you would have handled the situation down below and jerk or not a jerk and why. My wife wants to file for divorce after we found out that she couldn't conceive. I'm a 33 year old male and my wife is 32. We've been married for five years and we've been trying to conceive for some time. We ran through an array of tests and found out that she couldn't get pregnant. IVF is not an option. Starting a family and raising children was something that we both wanted to do. It was pretty shocking. My wife has taken it very badly. She has been moody and angry. I have tried to give her space and tried to talk to her, but she lashes out at both. It has been a week and she said she wants to file for divorce and be done with our marriage. She sounds angry when she talks about it. She said it was better that we get it done now. We got into an argument and she said I should find a woman who could give me what I want. I have tried to convince her that I have no intention of leaving her. She doesn't believe me. I don't know what to do here. I know she is just trying to deal with all of this and her emotions by turning them into anger and projecting them onto me. I don't know how to deal with this. She is supposed to be the rational one in the relationship. We have gone through a lot and she's dealt with everything with calmness. I know she is hurting a lot. I wish I could make her feel a bit better. Jumping into the future, there is an update. A lot has happened. I asked her that if she wanted to get divorced in six months time, we could get one, but we should drop it for now. She agreed to it. I took over most of the cooking and I pretty much made her all of her favorite dishes. She was still angry, but less so. Two days ago, she was finally in a place to process her emotions. She spent half the night crying in my arms. It was heartbreaking, but I held on. This morning, I cracked a joke and she laughed after what feels like a long time. She said she was going to start therapy because she wanted to be in a good mental place before we started any adoption process. There's a lot of work ahead of us, but I am fairly certain I am not getting divorced in six months. So what should I do? Not being able to have a baby seems to be a much more common reason for divorce than I ever expected. This one though is different because in some of the other stories we've seen, it was the wife who wanted to divorce the husband because he couldn't give her a baby. So she wanted to move on and get pregnant with someone else. No one specifically, just someone else who would get her pregnant. But in this story, it sounds like the OP is just willing to completely 
completely give up the idea of having his own biological children without a second thought because the wife isn't able to have children and he won't even consider abandoning her or living a life without her. He's sort of willing to put his relationship with her before his own needs to have his own biological children. Two very different ways to approach a situation and it's not like he doesn't want his own biological children because that's the whole reason for her offering up the divorce to him. Whether it's just symbolic or she really means it, she knows that he has stated that that's what he wants. But luckily, it looks like they were both able to come to terms with the idea of adoption. So what do you think you would do in a situation like this? Let me know down below. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories in this series, use the playlist at the top of the description. And next time you live stream, use the cream of the crop music. Search for cream of the stream on Spotify or whatever music platform you use for copyright free music to use for your stream. It's free cream of the stream. Either way, thanks a lot for listening. We'll see you guys next time.